Senator Rob Portman made headlines by announcing he's had a change of heart about same-sex marriage. Portman says that since learning his son is gay, he no longer opposes the idea, writing in an op-ed, quote, I wrestled with how to reconcile my Christian faith with my desire for Will to have the same opportunities to pursue happiness and fulfillment as his brother and sister. Ultimately, it came down to the Bible's overarching themes of love and compassion and my belief that we are all children of God. But not everyone agrees that unconditional love equates to unconditional support for our loved ones. Joining me now, Tony Perkins, president of the Family Research Council. Tony, thanks for joining us today. Good afternoon. All right, this is a very, very difficult, delicate balance for a lot of families who say, uh, this is not something that I've, I've believed in, my religion doesn't agree with this, but this is my child and now I see it differently. Well, Shannon's right. I mean, I support Senator Portman for his uh, very public display of his unconditional love for his, uh, his son. And I mean, as, uh, as a parent myself, I think the worst thing we can do in any circumstance is to reject our child. Not only is that counterproductive to them, it's counterproductive to society. And it does run counter, I think, to the, to the Christian ethic that undergirds our society. But as you said, unconditional love is not the same as unconditional support. And in this case, the, uh, the, the senator has kind of, I think, mixed the two or confused the two and has now changed his public policy position on something where the evidence is overwhelming. Children do best with a mom and a dad. And so I commend him on one hand, but concerned about his uh, policy position switch on the other hand. Well, some say that their concern is that uh, it, while you can unconditionally love your child, in their words, you don't have to unconditionally love or support their choices. Uh, but a lot of folks out there say this isn't a choice, that his son, Will, uh, didn't choose his sexuality. So how do you square that conversation? Well, there's no, there's no scientific evidence to suggest that that's the case. Now, I would not say that it is purely a choice from a standpoint that there is a combination of very uh, uh, significant and, and complex factors, mostly environmental, that come into it. There's no evidence to suggest that this is, uh, by, that this is uh, dictated by uh, genetics or this is biological. It, it is an issue of the environment, its factors, and I, I would agree. I don't think many that are in the, the homosexual lifestyle would choose that. So, uh, but there's still a difference here, Shannon. When we talk about loving our child, I mean, we even see that as, as Senator Portman talked about combing through Scripture. I mean, we see the prodigal, father, the prodigal son and his father loved him, wanted him back, wanted to be in relationship with him. And I think that's the way we should approach our children no matter what they do. But at the same time, we don't embrace choices from a, t from a standpoint of choosing to live in a lifestyle that we know from the, the evidence is overwhelmingly negative for both the individual and society. All right, there are a number of uh, children who are now speaking out. Uh, I think of one in particular who uh, has two mothers, and she wrote a letter to Justice Sonia Sotomayor sitting on the Supreme Court. They will hear two same-sex marriage cases next week, Prop 8 and DOMA. Uh, and she says, I'm doing fine with two moms, and please make this legal. How do you respond to a child like that? Well, again, Shannon, we don't make public policy based upon one individual occurrence. What we do in terms of shaping our public policy, we take into account many different factors, but we look at what is best for society as a whole. And we know overwhelmingly that society does best when children grow up with a mom and a dad who are married in a lifelong relationship. That's not just evidence that has popped up in the last decade. Uh, that's uh, 5,000 years of human history. And of course, we've had a, a very significant study looking into marriage policy over the last 50 years as a result of our policy of no-fault divorce. And now we have over 40% of our children being born out of wedlock in some part, portions of our society. 70% of young men are growing up without fathers. It's had devastating consequences. Par children need a mom and a dad. Both play very significant roles in the formative years and even through the adolescent years, especially the father playing that role in the adolescent years. Well, it's good to see across the board that folks are applauding the senator for embracing his son and for loving him. Uh, we'll see what happens in the policy side of this debate when the justices hear those two cases next week, and ultimately we expect a decision by June. Tony Perkins, thank you always. All right. Have a great afternoon. You too.